Alright guys, Touch Crabby back again today. Hope you enjoying your Saturday so far. Today, the World Championship weekend does begin. Two more days of action in the Modern Warfare season. Today, there are three games tomorrow, followed up by the World Championship Grand Final. Going to talk about the final four teams that are in contention today. That being Atlanta Phase, Dallas Empire, Chicago Huntsman and the London Royal Ravens. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Before we get into kind of predictions and analysis of the storylines, want to talk about this really big deal that happened yesterday. And honestly, the Call of Duty community was once again in absolute uproar about uh, I suppose what Activision Blizzard have done with the creator codes they are just implementing here into well Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I'm not exactly sure how this will develop over time. On the surface this is a really really cool thing like kind of copying what they've done over in Fortnite. Support creator code feature is live in Modern Warfare and Warzone. Only a small group of YouTubers have a code right now. Support to creator. Support your favorite Call of Duty creator with your in-game purchases. Creators will receive a portion of each purchase made using their code. So that's pretty cool to see. Um, yeah, we then saw this follow-up. Supporter Creator is currently in beta with a select group of creators and they hope to make it available for more very soon indeed. Creators get $5 for every 10,000 COD points spent with their code inputted. So initially this seemed really, really cool to see, right? And a lot of creators immediately came out in, in support of this saying that they had the codes ready to go. I mean, the likes of Nick Merckx, of course. I mean, he's been absolutely killing it on Warzone as of late and has been around the Call of Duty community for a number of years in the S&D scene, especially back in the Black Ops 3 days like Code MFAM in the COD store. Let's get it. I mean, then we get it comes out from Symphony. This is where it gets kind of interesting, right? Because you've got Symphony who really just came over to Call of Duty Modern Warfare with all the hype that the game was getting. And because Call of Duty Warzone is the popular thing to be playing right now, a lot of these individuals that have played Fortnite in the past and other games are coming over to the Call of Duty Warzone scene. That's cool to see, no denying it. But, you know, they're only here, I suppose you could say, because it's the popular thing right now. And if Call of Duty Warzone dies out and there's a new game coming along, they'll go and play that and you can't necessarily blame them. But, of course, there are some players, some are very high profile Call of Duty players that have been around the Call of Duty scene and helped build it from what it was back in the grassroots days to what it is today. And Activision Blizzard and the CDL wouldn't be the same as they are right now if it wasn't for some of these individuals. The likes of Scump, the likes of Nature, of course, certainly come to mind. And uh, well, as we'll see in a second, they didn't get a creator code. Blows the mind, to be honest, in my opinion. We then get this as well. So Drifter, you know, he's been around the Call of Duty scene for a number of years. He certainly deserves one. That's pretty cool to see. I was struggling to find like a complete list of all the individuals, but you've got the likes of Vic Star, Tim the Tatman, I believe. You do have Spratty as well, if you guys know, um, you know, Faze Spratty in the past. I'm not exactly sure if he's uh, associated with an organization nowadays. Been in a number of different organizations, though, really popular in the sniping community. And of course, Pomage as well, you would think, was, uh, well, in a similar category, right? However, that's not how it works out. Octane says, glad we got Melacode. I was worried for a second. So, Genji Nufo, you guys might remember the Nufo drama for a couple of years ago, the Zuma, Kozdov stuff. I'm sure you guys remember that if you've been around a few years. But um, as she says here, I mean, she has like something like 60,000. And Twitter followers. Congrats to her for sure for getting a creator code. But a lot of people are saying that, like, look, if Nufo's getting a code and some of these really high profile guys aren't, like, you know, what exactly is going on here, right? Super excited to announce I'm working with Call of Duty in their support to create a beta. So excited and thankful for this opportunity. So really cool to see for her. But, um, you know, as Hex then comes out and says, like, kind of what the community were thinking, the fact that neither Scump nor Nadeshot nor Pomage got a code is super screwed up. I don't use the F word ever on Twitter, just needed to say it. Scump and Pomage have an almost 99% COD channels and have been around since Call of Duty 4. Nade, the first COD player to go supersonic famous and was almost the perfect ambassador for the scene. What am I missing, says Hector. So him not happy with the, well, the situation that has been developing here. We then get this from Octane. Like the travesty of competitive COD aside this year, we genuinely had an opportunity to roll out something as big as creator codes in COD and we skipped out the Call of Duty players, bringing in a lot of the, you know, the Warzone streamers that have come in from other titles that will move on as soon as Call of Duty Warzone is not the popular thing to do. The likes of Scump, the likes of Nature, these big players. I mean, um, it just boggles the mind to be honest. Like, it's, it's understandable there's a relatively small group of people that they want to introduce it to first. I can understand if some of the Call of Duty players are like lower down on their agenda, but they'll likes of Scump, for example, I really can't, um, you know, you can't get over the fact that what Scump has done in Call of Duty throughout his history, and he's also a big Warzone stream as well, like when he has streamed Warzone, not as much over the last few days, of course, because they've been screwing and everything, because he's a Call of Duty professional player, and he wants to win the World Championship, and he could well do it again this weekend, as we're going to discuss in a couple of minutes' time here, but he's certainly still been big on the Warzone side, one of the biggest streamers in Call of Duty, TP as well, of course, who was absolutely massive in Blackout last season, kind of carried that scene, to be honest, at times, I don't think he got a creator code either. 
So some of these big names that have been around the professional Call of Duty scene, the guys who love the game, the guys who play the game year in, year out, and have helped it grow to what it is today, have effectively been snubs, you could say, by Activision Blizzard and whoever has put together this list of the players they want to roll it out to. Certainly they could have done Scump, certainly they could have done TP, even if that was just the tip of the iceberg, right? And in future, we're then going to roll it out to future Call of Duty professional players, which certainly makes sense, especially some of the guys that make content, the likes of Octane, Formal, I mean Karma, Crimson, these kind of guys, you could certainly do something like that for, but not even having Scump in there kind of says like, you know, is this even going to happen in the future? How many pro players are even going to come into it? You know, I've no doubt that Scump and Nature are going to get their time in the future, but just not rolling it out to them initially, um, you know, as I've said a number of times, boggles the mind to me. I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts down below. Slasher then says, Activision not giving Call of Duty creator codes to people like Scump, Nature, other long-time players and supporters who helped grow the game to where it is today is a huge slap in the face, not just to them, but to the entire community. Does it have to do with the relationship with the CDL? Maven says, could be the case for Scump, but definitely not for Nadeshot, right? My first thought was that it was rolled out for the COD partners. That doesn't seem to be the case. Hopefully, they remedy the issue, roll it out to more people. Those two should certainly be involved. From Marge then says, 10 years of COD and countless hours logged in. Do I deserve a code or did I just torch half my life at Call of Duty? Phase Jev, of course, saying a similar thing. Not even surprised I don't have a code. I get what I deserve. I accept my punishment. So, um, honestly, remarkable stuff. Intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below on this one. They managed to find a way to do it again and annoy the professional Call of Duty community. But regardless, let's go on to the matches that are going to go on tonight. First of all, before we get into the actual matches, just before everything kicks off, they're going to be doing this City Circuit Finals. Actually going to be casted by Sensor and Ake. So this is a pretty exciting prospect. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how these guys get on right. Because of course, with the next season possibility, who knows what Ake's is going to be doing. Sensor certainly still wants to compete. But Ake's might be in a spot where he's thinking, you know, is analyst desk a possibility, a caster opportunity, who knows. I mean, like, you know, we don't know what the next season brings, of course, but still, Aix and Sensor doing this seems pretty cool. This is like a 2v2 um, gunfight kind of thing going on. I think some of the players on here are relatively well known. I think the Ultra have Diamond, Con, and Royalty. Not sure the other guys on the other team, but it's none of the actual professional players on the starting lineup because they have either deleted the game or, well, in uh, Dallas Empire's case, getting ready for the World Championship Grand Finals in a couple of hours' time. This is what the schedule then looks like. So, Huntsman versus Royal Ravens is the first matchup of the day. And this is a big one. I mean, obviously, all these matches are big, right? I'm not exactly, um, you know, there's no real differentiation. All these games are elimination games to some degree, or in the sense of the winners' finals, determine who goes into the grand finals on the championship Sunday with the advantage in that series. Huntsman versus Royal Ravens. Huntsman have definitely had the advantage this season over the Royal Ravens. I think that um, they do go into this series as favourites, especially after the, the scouts they have taken so far. But Royal Ravens should not be underestimated by any means. Shawnee is playing very well right now, and he's kind of a key piece of the team. I think that that he's somewhat the X factor on the squad. The rest of the guys, you relatively well know what you're going to get from them. But if Shawnee's underperforming, it's, um, well, they can very easily get outslayed. And they did get outslayed at times this past weekend, but still managed to win the half points, which was very impressive, especially in the series against the Toronto Ultra, I believe. So yeah, Ravens, I mean, Zero's looking much better. Shawnee is looking at significantly better as he played so far. In that new role they're running with Scraps on the SMG and now Shawnee on that second AR, definitely makes sense to me. Up against the Huntsman team, which is a very clutch squad, right? But honestly, this this series has a Game 5 written all over it to me. I can see a 3-1 to Huntsman, I can see a 3-2 to Huntsman, and I can see a 3-2 to the Ravens, all being possibilities here. I imagine it goes Game 5. Which way it goes, who knows? I think, honestly, all of these series you could predict to go to Game 5 or to Game 9, for example, in the Championship match, and, uh, well, you wouldn't exactly be doing the wrong thing. However, Huntsman have shown their clutch factor. Ravens certainly have as well. I mean, they've won a couple of Game 5s recently, which was impressive. You certainly need to win Game 5s if you're going to win a World Championship. I think all these teams have done it so far this tournament as well, which is certainly impressive. And, uh, well, will they continue that streak going forwards? Huntsman with the unbelievable clutch factor against the OGLA. Ravens um, have shown some weakness in those clutch factors in those, well, clutch pressure environments in the past. If it goes to a Round 11, Huntsman will have a super, super good Round 11 record. And I imagine that these series are just so evenly matched a lot of these games that it really is going to come down to clutch factor. I can definitely see London Royal Ravens winning it, but of what Huntsman have achieved so far, I'm expecting them to continue their losers bracket run. It's probably going to go 3-2 in my opinion. We'll have to see what uh, well happens tonight. Then just after that game finishes, we get FaZe versus Dallas Empire. This is the winners bracket finals. The uh, the winner of this goes straight onto the championship match with that 1-0 advantage as we did just discuss. This is a really really tight series to call once again. I think I'm going to favor FaZe just about in a 3 
3-2 fashion. Honestly, I don't think I can predict anything other than game fives. These series are so evenly matched. But um, yeah, Dallas Empire phase. I mean, what a game this could be on paper. These teams have looked so, so good so far this tournament, especially in their clutch factor. I mean, game five is going to be an absolute blockbuster between these guys. I'm going to take phase to win this one. But when we go to the grand finals, I am predicting something to go a little bit differently as we'll look at. Because I do think that Clayster and Crimson, when it comes down to these big matches, are going to step up big time. And uh, maybe they don't quite do it in the winners' finals. But if they do make it back to the championship finals, I really believe that Crim6 and Clayster are going to bring a level of performance which we haven't really seen for them so far this season. As we said with, um, I suppose, the Royal Ravens, you know what you're going to get out of Healy, Shotzi and Hook most of the time. It's a really Crim6 and Clayster that have kind of been more up and down than the rest of the guys. And if they can clutch up at a big moment, I mean, this is the world championship. There's so much money on the line. I'm expecting them to come with the fire here. And some of the communication we've seen with the Dallas Empire squad is super impressive. So Dallas are actually going to be my favourites into the weekend. But I think the phase will just about pit them in the winners' finals here. Certainly could go another way. These series are so hard to call. As I say then, let's go on to the losers' finals, the final matchup of tonight. That would be, as I've got it, Huntsman versus the Dallas Empire. Again, if this doesn't go game five, I'd be kind of surprised. Um, yeah, certainly could go another way, but I'm going to take Dallas Empire to just get the better of them. This would be a great storyline to see, to be honest, to kind of finish off the season where it all began, right to the um, the launch weekend or whatever the first weekend was, really where Scump was, uh, you know, going at Crim6 across the stage and we had that drama. Would be great to finish off the season in a similar vein here. I honestly think it's uh, relatively likely to happen. I do think the Dallas Empire are probably slightly a better team right now and Crim6 and Clayster in these clutch environments when it really, really matters. Um, I think they're going to come to life. And then we go to the grand finals, of course, tomorrow. I'll look into this, of course, in tomorrow's video, given that uh, my predictions may be completely wrong here. But it's going to be, in my opinion, another rematch with FaZe and the Dallas Empire, with FaZe coming in with a 1-0 advantage in the grand finals. And if that is the case, this honestly isn't much of an advantage, right? You think about that. Dallas Empire come out hot, for example, let's say in the grand finals, win the first half point, because um, it's a 1-0 advantage, but they still ha start with a half point, right? They don't start with the search and destroy as if, um, as if like, FaZe won the half point. They just play eight maps starting with a hard point. I think there's two dominations thrown in there and um, kind of the rest of the series they've built off that. But if Dallas Empire come out hot and win that first hard point, immediately the series is tied, which is not something you see very often when a team comes from winners and the other team comes through losers. It's usually a much uh, tighter, well, a much more difficult affair from the team from the losers bracket. This time it's more possible. My kind of dreamland prediction is that Dallas Empire managed to win this in a game nine, take it all the way to a game nine round 11 and end up winning it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to favor the Dallas Empire just slightly on the weekend. But I think phase may well get the better of them in the winner's bracket. I think it's going to be super, super hard for Huntsman or Royal Ravens to make this loser's bracket run. The teams they're going to have to beat at disadvantages is going to be very tough indeed. Also, you've got to think about the veto disadvantage, which um, either FaZe or Dallas will come in with a veto advantage over the Huntsman in terms of which sides of the map they can choose on because they have the higher seeding. So that's another disadvantage to work against for the team coming through losers. Huntsman versus Royal Ravens then kicks off today at 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. at Pacific time, 7 p.m. my time here at British Summer Time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. As always, I'd greatly appreciate it. Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.